Good morning, welcome to Senior Stretch. All right, so today we're gonna to work a little bit on the knees. So if you can get safely down to the floor, bring a bathroom towel with you, and we're gonna pad our knees. So we're gonna fold this nice towel in half and place our knees on it. And uh, let's be a little bit, uh, Little bit back on the mat or the floor wherever your area your work area is let's see I'm gonna readjust so we're gonna do a little balancing pose so what we now know about balancing is that it fires the brain in a particular way and there's been early studies that show that one arm one leg sort of balancing helps um, the synapses fire in a particular way that will even slow Alzheimer's symptoms so this is a big big deal so we're gonna come to a little wide knee position with the heels about even with the knees, and then we're gonna take the fingers, intertwine them, and give a little roll to the wrists. Now how you stand or pose yourself safely in this pose is not to slump forward or back, but to kind of squeeze your butt. And as you squeeze your butt, you'll get a little activation in the upper thighs, and that keeps your body upright in this position. So a little roll of the wrists again, and then we're going to take the left forearm parallel, take the right hand to the left hand, and just pull the hand back. So we're stretching across the wrist and the forearm. And then the other side, forearm parallel, and then you're going to take that wrist back. And then from here, just shake out the wrists. Small circles one direction, small circles the other. Shake them like there's water. Then bring your hands into a cactus position, open the fingers wide, and let them go. Open and let go, open and let go. Then again, open the fingers and then roll them. And then again, open them wide and then roll them. Then let go, then open them wide and roll them. And one more time, open wide and roll them. Good job. And then hang on to the left wrist. So you're just gonna grab right here and then roll that wrist one direction. What we're doing is working the keyboard out of our fingers and our wrists and then other direction. And then other hand, you're holding on at the wrist, you're rolling. And then you're rolling the opposite direction. Okay, now we're gonna come into our balancing pose. So in our balancing pose, we want our fingers nice and wide. So that means as I come down to the mat, I'm gonna take my fingers not like this, but like this. Crease of the wrist is always under the shoulder, so never here never here where we might overstretch the wrist, but crease of the wrist right under the shoulders. Face stays parallel, don't let the head drop. You're gonna take your right leg back and bend the ankle and curl the toes. So notice how I'm curling the toes back toward the shin, right? So it's not this or this. It's a push with the heel, a straightening of the leg. Don't let the elbows bend. Press hard out of the hands and hold it. Drop it down. So again, notice that form. I'm pushing with the heel. There is no bend in the knee. If you can't get your leg straight, then take it to the straightest point you can get it. Bend the ankle. That activates the leg to keep the strength in the pose. All the way down, we're going to take the right leg back. Push with the bottom of the right foot. Keep your face somewhat parallel to the earth. Don't lift it up or drop it down. All the way down, other side, left leg comes back. Down to the floor. So here's the balance format. So we're gonna do one arm, one leg. So you need to start with your knees as wide as your hands. Take your right leg back, flex the foot, pull the right bicep in, take the left arm forward and take the fingers of the left hand wide. You have to turn this bicep in for strength here. This seems like it would be really easy, but it's not. Drop the left hand, then the right knee. Other side, you're gonna take the left leg back, the ankle is bent, there's no bend in the knee. You take the right arm forward, the fingers are wide. Drop the hand, then the knee. Here we go, it's right leg first, set it up, turn the bicep in. Then extend that left arm. Drop the hand, drop the knee. Left leg comes back, bend the ankle, no bend in the knee, reach with the right arm, fingers wide on the right hand. Pull the left bicep in, drop it down. So notice what I keep saying about the biceps. So if I face you, 
you see that this is hyperextension and I can sink into my shoulders and wrists and elbows. I don't want that. I want to turn the biceps in so the inner elbows face each other. That's your power point here. Okay, now we're gonna do this all at once. So it's gonna be right leg, left arm. All at once, right leg, left arm, reach. To the floor, all the way down. Left leg, right arm, reach. And down, right leg, left arm, reach. And down, you're pulling that bicep in. Left leg, right arm, reach. And down, two more. Right leg, left arm, reach. Drop it down, left leg, right arm, reach. Good job. Then walk yourself back a little bit. And with an angle between the left knee and the right foot, we're gonna come up to this square position, right? So ankle under the knee. Take your forearms on your thighs, not your knee, but your thigh, and lean into that right hip. Then plant your hands either side of the right foot to come out. Notice how I'm creating a big angle between the left ankle and the right knee. That's for stability. Ankle under the left knee, forearm on the thigh. Lean into that hip. Then unwind fingertips in the middle, knees wide. Ankles always line up with the knees, so they're not here, but they're here. Intertwine the fingers, take a little shoulder stretch back. Only go as far as your body wants to go. Don't overdo it here. Wait for it. Oftentimes your shoulders will sort of crack or release. Head comes out nice and easily. Hands on the hips. We'll tuck of the head back and forth. Okay, one more time in that four square position, we're gonna take the right leg forward. We're gonna come right back into that hip stretch. Then we're gonna take our arms up, keep your gaze on the floor while you set it, then drop your head back and look up. So the balance is part of the pose. Head and neck comes out, take your arms right back to your thigh, Come into the hip stretch. Plant your hands either side of the right foot and take the right leg back. Come up at that angle. Again, you're creating the kitty corner between the knee and the ankle. Ankle under the left knee. Forearms on the thigh. Take the stretch. Keep your gaze on the floor while you lift your arms. So gaze on the floor is always steady. Then look up at your hands once you've set the pose. And then it comes out, drop your hands, come on out with the leg. Now, if this feels really wobbly to you, you're gonna set up the right leg and cock the back toes of the left foot, right? So this time we're gonna do it with the toes cocked, so forearms on the thigh. Keep your gaze on the floor while you set the arms, bring the arms up, little lift in the belly helps. Drop the arms right back to the thigh fingertips either side, come on out. So now you see why we need the little knee padding here, right? Little angle between the knee and the ankle, forearms on the thigh. Well, actually, let's put our fingers down while we cock our toes. Cock the toes, now forearms on the thigh. Then come on up with your gaze on the floor, fingers wide, then once you have the gaze on the floor, then lift it up to the sky. And then it comes out, take your fingertips down, come on out, get rid of the towel for a moment. We're gonna come right down into the child's pose. So if you're super flexible, you can come all the way down like I am. If you're not, no big deal. Just take your forearms wherever you can go and you push your weight back from your forearms. So you're looking to take this stretch right in the inner thighs, a little bit on the knees and in the hips, right? So you can be here or you can come all the way down with your forehead on the floor. Come on up. We're gonna walk ourselves up to a cat cow. So cock the toes if you wanna add the feet, sway the back, inhale. Tops of the feet and arch, look at the belly button. Again, sway and look up. And arch and look at the belly. And again, sway, look up and then arch, and then go right back to the child's pose, knees out, toes in, press your weight back. Take as much weight as you can in the back body, meaning I'm using my hands here.
to push my weight back in the back body. Nice and easy, come on up and over to one hip. So do you see how I did that? I'm putting the weight in the hands and I'm just tucking one knee over so I come down safely on my hip. I'm gonna come into a Baddha Konasana position, which is a very standard yoga position where we open up the hips. Remember, you do not need to bring the heels in tight. Find a nice, easy position for them. Okay, we're gonna move the toes back and forth and we're gonna work on a little stretch for the hip. So we're gonna take two fingers around the big toes. This is called a yogi toe lock. And we're gonna lift one leg, turn the bicep in. So not here, but turn it in and open your leg as much or as little as you can. Now you might only come this far. You haven't really stretched the inner hamstrings a lot yet. So just take it into an easy position. All the way down, other side, you're gonna take that left leg out, turn the bicep in. Come right back down into a Baddha Konasana. Use your elbows if you like, move your toes back and forth. And this time walk yourself into the simple straddle that we do all the time. Forearms on the thighs or the floor, if you can get them there, fingertips, wherever you are. So fingertips, palms, forearms, even hands on the shins will work here. Then come on out. And again, we're gonna work what's called Upavista Konasana. So two fingers around the big toes. We're gonna extend one leg. Try to extend it a little more. I can go all the way straight, but I'm super flexible. So stay wherever you are. If you're right here, remember the elbow is not outside the knee, but inside the knee. Then all the way out, other side. If you're super flexible, you're going all the way straight and turning the bicep down. If you're not, you're taking the elbow inside the knee all the way out, nice and easy. We're gonna play with this little balancing pose. So there's a little place called the magic diamond right here where you can balance. So you're gonna sit on your mat, two fingers around the big toes and lift up the heels and roll back. So we're using our lower belly to control this. So two fingers around the big toes, you're gonna roll back and find that balance point, just hold it. If for some reason you roll back, like a kindergartner, no big deal. This pose will invite that sometimes when you're learning it. To get out of that safely, you take your hands under your knees, round your shoulders, kick from your belly, and roll up. Okay, so it's a safe way to come up. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna do it facing you. Two fingers around the big toes. Roll back, find that little balance point. See if you can lift one leg just a little bit. Drop it down. Keep your gaze on something on the floor and lift that leg open. All the way down to the floor. Take your hands to your toes, move your toes back and forth. So general rule of thumb whenever we're doing balancing poses, pick a spot on the floor and stare at it. The more you look at the floor, the more balanced you will be. Okay, two fingers around the big toes. We're gonna roll back. If this is as far as you wanna come, great, that's fine. Lift one leg, drop it down. Lift the other leg, keep your gaze steady on something on the floor. Drop those legs, two hands to the toes. Now we're gonna lift both legs at the same time. So here's what it looks like in its full pose. You open up, turn the biceps in, and that might be really intense for a lot of folks who are not super flexible, so we're gonna do it part way. So two fingers around the big toes, we're gonna roll back. And then with your gaze steady on the floor, don't move your eyes, take your legs out as much or as little as you can. Hold the balance point. Notice that I'm not sinking, right? I'm sitting up in the upper body. That's part of the pose. Drop it down. Take your legs out into a straddle position. Hang on to the shins. Notice when I do this, I'm curling the toes and bending the ankles so the calves sit on the floor for safety. Hang on to your shins. Pull yourself forward. And then one more time with the Upavista pose, two fingers around the big toes. So listen to the steps, do it in steps. First, find the magic diamond balance point, lift your toes. Then when you're ready, set your gaze point. Sit up, take your legs open as much or as little as you like and keep the balance form. If you've got a little more juice, then open up a little bit. I recommend opening slowly, inch by inch. 
You can go all the way out and you're super flexible. That's great. You don't need to. We don't care about straight legs. We're just somewhere in the balance. The work is in the balance. All the way out. Take those legs out in front of you. Give them a little shake. Take your thumbs into the crease of your upper thigh and your lower trunk. And we're going to finish with a simple forward bend. So curl those toes, bend the ankles, reach on over. Take your hands to the shins or the feet. Draw your belly forward. Wait for the stretch behind the thighs, so in the hamstring. Come on out. Shake out your legs. Actually, while we're here, let's just do a little up dog to open up the low back. So roll around, forearms on the floor. Notice how I automatically do that. I put the forearms in a triangle to get down to the floor safety. So let's try that safely. Let's try that again. So forearms come down in an equilateral triangle, not tiny, but equilateral. I use the weight of my body on the forearms to come safely to the floor. Now stick your thumbs, if you're female, in your underwire line and bring your thumbs two inches lower. If you're a guy, it's thumbs in the mid ribs. Never want your hands here or here, never next to the breast, but one whole hand length lower. So the crease of the wrist is under the elbow. The elbows do not poke out, they stay in. Feet are wide, as wide as your mat. Elbows in, come on up, look up. Take a little bend in the elbows to get in the low back. All the way down, now you might not come as high as I'm coming, you may only come this far. That's fine, use your eyes to help you guide the shape of the pose. So again, no hands up here, no hands next to the breasts, but one whole hand length lower, crease of the wrist under the elbow, fingers wide, feet wide, elbows graze the body. You look up and let go of the low back. You want more, straighten the arms. Take a little bit more in the hips. Come all the way down to the floor. Chin on the floor, hands into fists, massage the low back. One more in the low back. Bring those hands all the way back. Take a quick look. Is the crease of the wrist under the elbow? Then come on up. Now listen carefully. Push out of the hands. Hinge your butt back. Walk your knees in gently. Take your knees out wide. Come down on the forearms or the palms. Press your weight back into the back body for a child's pose. Now we're going to walk ourselves up to standing, so we're back in the all fours position. If you have trouble getting to the floor, make sure you're next to a solid surface and get very close to that surface so your arm is pretty much in line with your shoulder before you get up. From here, if you're going to come from the floor, we're going to walk one foot up. We're going to put our weight in our hands and we're going to walk our other foot up. Notice how I walk myself up to a squat, not a straight, straight leg position. So we're going to do that again. One more time, weights in the hands. I'm walking one foot up, then another, I'm in a squat. Then I'm gonna fit, put my feet in a parallel position, walk my hands up my shins or simply to my waist. Straighten the legs in an L position. Once I have the L, take a little pull between the thighs, pull the thighs together as you lift up and you will keep the weight out of the back. So one more time, we're in the L position we're going to take a little bit of pull between the thighs and notice if you do that, you'll feel no weight in the back and you'll protect your back. Thanks so much for joining me for Senior Stretch and there'll be more to come. Hope you have a great day.